Uh, She's not here. No. <laughs> <coughs> Wait a couple minutes. Here, I'll take Not more time? Not <coughs> up to me. Do you want to start, Gail? I'm ready. Okay. We good, Dolores? The mics are on. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I want to call the meeting, special meeting of the town council for Monday, November 13, 2017, to order. Uh, no Lords. Councilor Bello. Here. Councilor Hemming. Here. Councilor Hurley. Here. Councilor Latina is here. Councilor Martino. Here. Councilor Brown. Here. Councilor Spinella. Here. Deputy Mayor Barry. Here. And Mayor Montanier. Here. Thank, Thank you, you, Dolores. Um, our order, our um, item of for, uh, discussion tonight is the revised budget. I'm just going to let Jeff, I assume, take us through a brief presentation on the screen first, and then we'll move to motion. Yes, um, I'll turn it over to Finance Director Michael O'Neill in a minute. Just some preface that uh, over the past couple of weeks since the adoption of the state budget, we've waited for the information to come out on what those numbers mean to Weathersfield in terms of revenue and different programmatic changes. We believe the budget that you'll uh, readopt this evening an amendment to the May 15th budget addresses those changes plus uh, contingencies in the event there's minor adjustments, for instance, to the renter's rebate program that's still some up, up in the air. Um, we believe we've accounted for that, not in the administration of it, but in terms, in fact, if the funding responsibilities uh, come to the town, we still don't have an idea how to run the program since it's been run through OPM. But the budget will reflect the capability for us to make those payments if, in fact, uh, that's what happens at the end of the process. So I'm going to set up the uh, overhead, and Mike's going to take you through the changes. Good evening, Mike O'Neill, Finance Director. Um, everyone see the screen okay? So this is a spreadsheet that uh, you're familiar with. Um, we've adapted it a bit. Um, this is typically what we use to adopt the budget back in the spring. Uh, so what we've done is, there, I'm trying to see my cursor. Um, we've taken this column. This is the budget as it was adopted uh, on May 15th and then in the second and the th uh, third column from the right we've made several adjustments we're looking at revenues at the moment and then the final uh, the second column from the right this says town council is what the, the proposal is tonight 
Um, so let me just, ta I'll take you through this add and deduct column. Um, the first number, $1.5 million increase to the tax levy is the net impact of all the other changes. So we, we can come back to that. Um, we have an increase in the motor vehicle uh, supplemental line, which reflects the increase um, from 32 mils to 39 mils for the motor vehicle cap. Um, we budgeted that in the spring at 32, and law is now 39, so that increases by 162,000. Um, this next group of changes down here in these uh, two categories, these are just all the changes in the various state aid lines um, as a result of the adopted state budget. And then there's just a couple of more, uh, one minor change, the recording fee changed as part of the state budget as well for historical documents. So that's another $1,300 um, that we would um, estimate that we would receive. And then down uh, on the, in the road fund, which is at the end of the second page of the spreadsheet, there are just a, an increase in the LOSIP and a decrease in the uh, revenue sharing line and then the the net impact there and then there was a there's a, a program the grants for municipal projects which state budget specifies that has to be used in the same manner that the town a road is used so we took it out of the number didn't change it didn't go down we took it out of the general fund moved it to the road fund so you see a decrease up in the top in the general fund an increase here and then the net impact is uh, because of the low sip add back is a decrease in the road levy that's the 280,000 any questions uh, i'll jump over to the expenditure side if there's if there are unless there's any questions at the moment so this is just telling us that the taxes are going up 1.5 million from budget to budget you take the 1.5 less the 280 in the road fund. So they go down 280, the, the, using round figures, they go up by about a, a million two. Up a million five in the general fund, down 280,000 in the road fund. A majority of the tax increase is taking motor vehicles from 32 to 39. That's where a majority of your new tax levy comes from. Do you have, <clears throat> sorry, do you have any indication when the low SIP money will be approved? I don't. It's bonded money? State Bonding Commission. So arguably next month they would meet. So related to that increase, um, of 1.2, that includes the cut to ECS? We're just looking at revenues right here. Okay. He's gonna to get to the expenditure side in the next couple sheets. So, okay. Um, can you just help me better understand the CNEF road fund? <clears throat> I'm just having, so they restored, a, a, at least on paper, because it hasn't been approved by the bonding commission at this point the low sip 335505 <clears throat> the decrease in the MR, MRSF motor vehicle that's a revenue sharing related to the 32 okay. mil cap okay that goes away which they had been eliminated prior to that anyway and then the state aid for grants okay you explain that okay Never mind. And then we just hold we hold the road fund at a million five hundred thousand. Yeah. So the tax levy just adjusts accordingly to stay at the million and a half. Okay. All right. I just needed to talk it out. Thank you. You had talked about renters rebate. Is that under the state pilot or is that its own line item? That's on the expenditure side. You'll see you'll see an amount in uh, social and youth services a proposed okay. increase there. Go up one page for me, please. But if you look at this program here, see the pilot elderly homeowner, mm -hmm. we used to get reimbursed for that. It's a state program that discounts real uh, property taxes for certain elderly income eligible. Sure. We used to get paid back for that. 
you will not <coughs> under this state budget. So it's a $205,000 revenue decrease to us mm -hmm. that we had to make up for because the program still has to be done because we've already discounted the real estate taxes on these parcels for the current year. So that's part of the reason why you're seeing cuts and fills across the board. Do we know, uh, going back to the renter's rebate real quick, do we know what the legislature plans on doing? I know they're scheduled to go in today or tomorrow and Wednesday, and there's rumor that they're going to do something with the renter's rebate, but there's no specifics yet. The assumption is, from the conversation, let me, is that there's about $14 million that is kind of stranded in the state budget that would be applied to renter's rebate, but that's about two-thirds the total cost of the program that is the state spends annually. The expectation is if that money is allocated to the program, the towns would then have to pick up the difference between the 14 to the 22, 21 million that is customarily spent. And that's where we're seeing the 205? We put, no, we actually, when we get to the expenditure side, uh, we put 270 in is what the amount of the applications Weathersfield has taken for renter's rebate equal about $270,000 for the year. Because the town social services will take the application and submit them to OPM and then there's a running tally on what that number is until OPM makes the payments at the end of October. So we know what the value of the rebate is. There's just no mechanism to pay those bills at this point. Even if you do adopt tonight's budget with the 270 in it, we still don't know who gets the money and how much because there's a complex formula based upon not only income but other aid these uh, renters get. So OPM, we're hoping that when this is all said and done, if we have to take responsibility for the program, OPM uh, for this year at least gives us what they would have given the information, you know, the information on each applicant, what they would have given so we can cut the proper checks. Okay, thank you. So you have, just to clarify, you have two programs, the elderly and disabled, that which was a revenue to us that has gone away as revenue, but we still have to make the discounts on the property taxes. That's one program. Then you have renters rebate on the other side. Effectively, they do the same thing, one for real estate owners, one for renters. They give them rebates or discounts. Well, why do we have to, we, I know we budgeted 205000 for the homeowners. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're on the hook for that? Yes. Is that, okay. Because we've already set a, you know, to discount on their value, on their home value. Mm -hmm. So it's already baked into the grand list. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. So we'll look at exp expenditures next. And just to... Just a few adjustments there. These are the proposals. Uh, the first is uh, estimated cost of sending out a full second round of tax bills is $23,000. We have to do that because uh, all the motor vehicles were billed at 32 mills. So we'll bill them for an additional seven mills. And then when we sent the uh, real estate and personal property bills out, uh, back in June, there was no second payment amount, uh, anticipating um, being in the situation that we find ourselves in. So there'll be a full set of real estate and personal property bills that will be issued for uh, with the second payment amount. So between the, the cost of generating the billing and the postage, that's $23,000. Um, here in uh, Social and Youth Services is the $270,000 for the renter's rebate program. And a reduction um, is proposed um, on the Board of Ed line for the amount of the reduction from the state in the um, ECS grant. And then to, uh, to balance, to keep the mill rate the same as the mill rate that was adopted, again, that's what this is designed to do, um, requires a $91,000 reduction to the transfers line. And what we would do there is use uh, reserves to make, part of that transfer line is uh, monies 
that we use to pay, uh, make payments on leases for rolling stock. And we would, um, we would use reserves to make up the $91,000. Part of the money you transferred in at the end of last fiscal year into the reserve funds. Can I just ask one more question? I'm, to go back to the LOSIP, so what if, I mean, hopefully the Bond Commission will include that in their December meeting, but what if they don't? What is that going to do? since we're already planning on sending out something related to the, the adjusted mm -hmm. mill rate, what will that do? Because if that's not, if they play along, and I can't make the assumption that, I mean, honestly, in good faith, we never expected to be this far out with <coughs> state budget. So what if they don't bring that up to the bond agenda? I mean, we're still waiting. Honestly, we're still waiting for the drainage funds to be leveraged. And, and that's been 10 years. I, and I'm just asking the question. Right. Uh, the low SIP funds, we use those for major reconstruction projects. So we take low SIP, we save it up two or three years, and then do one large project. The next project that we have resolution or you have passed a resolution and we've gained state authorization for is Dix Road. We have some of that money already and we anticipated last year's low SIP money to be used towards Dix so we could begin construction. But as you know, they evaporated the program in 2016 and recreated it in this fiscal year with the expectation that any of the monies that we did not get last year, we will now get again. So they're gonna give us last year's money that they took away, plus this year's money. So we're supposed to get all of it back. That's the expectation and that's what's written in the budget. So we have no, nothing else to do but believe in what they've passed and wait. With the, with the expectation that if they don't give us the low SIP, we just won't do Dick's Road. We'll have to find another way or move dicks into the rehab program and use more money from rehab to do the reconstruction okay. so was all the three hundred thirty-five thousand going to dicks road that's the expectation that road is going to be six seven hundred thousand dollars to do so we take a in before that we did um we did only road the same way we saved up for two or three years and then redid only road so you're allowed an authorization and you dedicate these funds to a particular project anything left over you can then ask for to reprogram to your next project and then you begin to save at least on weathersfield's end we begin to save these monies again towards the next project so we only spend low sip maybe once every three years but accumulate it towards a project over that same time period Jumping off a of low sip real quick and touching on the 467,000. It's not on this sl slide, but it's on slide, I think the last one. 467 uh, ECS cut. Is that going to affect the MBR at all? No. The, uh, I think the, the Board of Ed was up well over a million. So. Okay. And then the MBR is adjusted. I think you're allowed to adjust your MBR based upon your ECS cut too. So there's a couple different mechanisms there that don't make it an issue. Okay. I have a question. Um, so the, it looks like the board is, they sent us kind of basically what they would cut and it looks like a lot of uh, people that weren't hired at higher steps or some people they're not gonna hire until they'll just hold off on hiring. That's what it looks like mostly. Um, on the town side, it doesn't look like anything is in there. Did we look at that also? Well, we're we're taking the five hundred grand of additional programmatic expenses. So we've we didn't take a lot of cuts on the town side because we didn't have a lot to give up. We've held off on hirings and so forth. But the 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 number one position we need to add back at this point is physical services because we get to plow snow here in the next few months. 
So we're below staff now. We've held off on hiring floater, the floater in my office. Um, we delayed a couple of other ones that were out there, but we don't anticipate um, not coming back up to the staff we had at the beginning of the summer. We're not adding people, but we're not eliminating anybody. I mean, since we're going up, you know, over a million dollars in taxes, you would think maybe we would look at some of that too, from one budget to the next. And maybe look at the board a little more. It looks like they just took some stuff off the top that they were going to save anyways. Well, again, a majority of the tax uh, impact is going from 32 to 39. Yeah, I get it. But it was, it's raising the taxes from what, we had, what was adopted to what is now we're changing, the taxes on the town residents. And those are policy decisions you all can make. Mike, what is the exact number of um, dollars that the supplemental tax will be for cars? The second motor vehicle bill. Oh, the second bill? There's two different motor vehicle bills that will go out. The supplemental, which we do every year <coughs> for people that bought cars after the grand list date, and, that's a, and that new revenue based upon the change in the way, it's about a, what is that, 162000 then you have the dollar value of the change from 32 to 39, which is? Which is, that's going from $5.8 million to $7 million, so it's about a million two. So an increase of 1.4? Yes. Before Senate Bill 1 was passed, did we just mirror, I can't remember how the, the motor vehicle taxes were assessed. It would have mirrored. The motor vehicle rate and the real estate rate were the same rate. So if, if, if Senate Bill 1 had never gone into effect, the rate would be even higher than what we're proposing right now? Yeah, it'd be at 39.77, okay. same as real estate. And next year, those two numbers, because if they don't change it again, Next year's motor vehicle rate is set to be at 45, which is well above where we are as a town. So we would envision as we develop next year's budget that there's parity between the real estate rate and the motor vehicle rate. So it'll return the way it was before? Yes. Most likely. Mm -hmm. okay. We'd be un unencumbered with a cap. Got it. Do we get reimbursed for that delta? No. There's no reimbursement for motor vehicle. at all for us so is senate bill one then eliminated through the budget through this year's budget that I, program MRSA program um for some communities they are still receiving uh motor vehicle reimbursements those above 39 above what? some number which is exceeding ours I have a last question. Um, renter's rebate, if OPM does not allocate the money that we expect, the 270, then we have to not only upfront it, but we won't get reimbursed, correct? We, um, right. It'll be, the legislation calls for it to be a, a town program now. And my conversation with the OPM, um, they read this, <laughs> the statute is that the towns have to do it. It's not an option. So we won't be reimbursed, and there's no... Yeah, there's no thought that we would be reimbursed. There's no money to reimburse us either, so, you know. Do they approve the rebate, or would we have to approve the rebate? Those are good questions. We have no idea how this program will go forward, other than at some point the renters who are income eligible would receive a check. By the action tonight, we would be putting that money aside, so we'll have to make up for it in the next budget, correct? You would have to account for this program in your next budget, yes. And the 270 is just the value of the rebate, that's not the administration of it? Correct. Thank you. You wanna go 
of the motion. Other so, questions from council on this? Go ahead, Mike. I'm sorry. If, you, if you'd like, you know, uh, motions have been prepared uh, based on what's been presented here. Uh, I can take you through those. So, and again, these should look familiar. There's a couple that uh, um, are not here because no changes apply, um, but they, they should look familiar to uh, what, what you've seen at adoption time in past years. So motion number one is just an adjustment to the revenue accounts based on that add and deduct column. That, that mirrors that. Motion number two is the adjustments to the expenditure <coughs> accounts, the expenditure lines. Motion number three is just a change to the uh, Board of Education line. Motion number four is uh, to approve total appropriation for the Board of Education, which reflects the proposed decrease. Motion number five is the total expenditures, that's the general fund and the road fund combined. <coughs> Motion number six is an approval of a total tax levy, again for both funds, road fund and general fund. Motion number seven is uh, the mill rate for real and personal property for the general fund. Motion number eight is the general fund mill rate for motor vehicles. Motion number nine is the mill rate um, for the road fund for real and personal property. And the last motion number 10 is the mill rate for motor vehicles in the road <coughs> fund. And you can see those last four motions are summarized at the top of the revenue page. You can see the, uh, the breakdown. So the motor vehicles, if you take the, the general fund and road fund amounts, they total at 39 mills. And then likewise for real estate and personal property, they, property, they total to the 39.77 mills, um, which is the, identical to the rate that was approved in May. Thanks, Mike. Any discussion about any of that before the motions? Okay. Seeing none, I'll entertain the first motion. Motion that the budget is adopted by the Town Council on May 15, 2017. Be here, and, be here and after is amended as follows. Increase $162,000 for revenue account 42103 supplemental motor vehicle tax. Decrease $3,500 for account 42506 state pilot dis disabled homeowners. Decrease $205,000 for account 42510 state pilot elderly homeowners. Decrease $1,987 account 42610 Mashatucket Pequot. Decrease $21,785 account 42611. MRSA grants for municipal projects. Decrease $940,267 for account 42615 MRSA revenue sharing. Decrease $856,284 for account 42616 MRSA motor vehicles. Increase $519,476 for account 42617 Municipal Stabilization Grant. Decrease $467,446. Account 43001 Education Cost Sharing. Increase $1,300. Account 45801 Recording Fees. Increase $335,505. CNEF Account 42601 LOSA. Decrease $77,200, CNAF account 42616, MRSA motor vehicles. Increase $21,785, CNAF 42611, MRSA 
grants for municipal projects. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. No. Opposed? No. 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 Uh, do you have that, Dolores, or do you need hand count? I don't. Can you please raise your hand if you said no? Thanks. Thank you. Motion two. Motion that the budget is adopted by the Town Council on May 15, 2017. Being hereafter is amended as follows. Increase $13,500 for account 240, tax collector. Increase $9,500, account 250, central office services. Increase $270,000 for account 620, social and youth services. Decrease $91,000 from account 950, transfers CIP slash CNEF. Second. Motion and second. Discussion? Mike? I missed it uh, earlier, but one of those was for postage and one was for something else. The additional mailing? The actual creation of it? Oh. That's uh, the cost of generating the bills in so it's 23000 to generate the bills to send with, out? With postage, yes. With postage, okay. And that's taking care of the supplemental and the increase in the mill rate. The two, you'll be doing two s separate bills? One to yeah, the- Yeah, it's a full, it's, it's a full run of bills like, like uh, taxpayers would receive in June. It's the same in July, you know, it's the same. It's a full set of motor vehicle for, again, for just seven mills. And then it's the second, it, we've now calculated the second payment for real estate and personal property. Okay. Thank you. Other discussion? Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. no. Thank you. Motion three. Motion that the budget is adopted by the Town Council on May 15, 2017. Be here and after is amended as follows. To decrease the total appropriations for the school purposes by $467,443. Second. Discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. no. Four. Motion that the total appropriations for school purposes be set at Fifty-seven million three hundred and ten thousand four hundred and thirty-nine dollars for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2017. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. No. Motion five. Motion that the Town Council adopt the Town Budget as amended by the Town Council in the sum of $101,463,391 for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2017. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. 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 Motion six. Motion that the total amount to be raised by taxes for the town, library, school, and capital and non recurring road fund purposes combined be set at $86,684,894 for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2017. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Is there a discussion? I'm sorry, I missed that one. Discussion? I'm sorry, Mike. Just real quick on number six. Amount raised the 86,684,984. That, what is the increase? in what we're voting on the total increase total increase is one million two hundred sixty seven thousand nine hundred fifty one dollars okay above what was adopted in may that's right okay yes thank you further discussion sorry about that Okay, motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Oh, no. No. Sorry. No. 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 Same no. 
Motions. You got that, Dolores? Yes. Motion seven. Motion that the general fund tax rate on all real and personal taxable property be set at 39.43 mills for the physical year beginning July 1, 2017. Second. Discussion? Right. Seeing none. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. 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 Motion eight. Motion that the general fund tax rate on all motor vehicles taxable property be set at 38.67 mills for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2017. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. no. Motion nine. Motion of the capital and non recurring roads fund tax rate on all real and personal taxable property be set at 0.34 mills for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2017. Second. Discussion? Seeing none. Motion of second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. 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 And finally, 10. Motion that the capital and non recurring roads fund tax rate on all motor vehicles taxable property be set at 0.33 mills for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2017. Second. Discussion? Seeing none. Motion is second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. no. Thank you. Jeff, anything else? No, Mr. Mayor, that includes the that concludes the 2017-2018 budget <laughs> preparation process. Yeah. And if y'all stay for a few minutes, we'll start next year's pretty quick. <laughs> no, but uh, thank you very much for your patience through this fall. It has been uh, it's been a wild ride. So congratulations on the adoption of your budget. Very good. Thank, thank you, you, Jeff. Thank you, Mike. Uh, I think we have a motion to adjourn before we reconvene here. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We've got a five minute.